Hey guys, welcome back. Uh, so today I have a kid's dirt bike. It's a Coolster kid's dirt bike. I think it's a 50cc engine. Um, advertised as just needing a pull cord and a tube for the rear tire. And when I went to pick it up, I almost walked away from it. I probably should have. Because so I could see there was a lot more wrong with it than advertised. Um, I'm not going to go into details on all these things yet. Kind of my main focus is on the engine. And I did jump ahead a little bit and uh, removed this uh, recoil with the camera off. And I was kind of disappointed at what I saw. The, uh, the flywheel is missing about 50% of its cooling fins. And when I went to go take it off, this bolt was completely stripped out. So I struggled with that quite a bit, but I did finally get it out. And um, I ordered a new flywheel that's on its way, as well as a cord for the recoil. So while I'm waiting for that to come in, I figure I'm just going to jump right into the carburetor. Um, I'm sure it needs to be cleaned. Also, it has no air cleaner assembly. So based on how the engine runs, I'll have to order one of those. And the fuel line here is two different sizes spliced together and held with a zip tie. So that has to be replaced. And the throttle linkage is something going on here. There's a piece of tape here that I think used to go up to here. You can see this whole thing is being held on by tape. Uh, so I definitely do not want my kids riding something like that where the throttle could get stuck. Um, there's probably about 10 other issues at least that I can see here. I'm not going to detail them all right now. The main focus is on the engine and the transmission. Let's get that going and then based on how that runs, uh, we'll work our way out. So let's get started. Okay, so there is still gas in the tank. I'm just going to pop this hose off and drain it into this tank right here. Okay, next, just got to remove this throttle slide and then the carburetor should be free uh, to remove. Okay, I know you probably can't see it too well, but this here is where the carburetor bolts onto. And there's no gasket on this side, and there's none on that side. So, this probably won't run very well without that. Um, anyway, let me get this carburetor cleaned up and worry about the gasket when we put it back on. Okay, so I haven't taken one apart quite like this before, so I should learn something here. This hose here I think is just an, uh, an overflow hose to keep it from flooding out. And it just drips on the ground. Anyway, this, this hose is a little petrified. I might need a new one. Uh, this here is a jet, or it might be the mixture fuel to air. I'm going to count how many turns to put, to turn it in and that way I'll know where to set it after cleaning. So there's half, one, half, two, half, three, four, four turns.
Okay, I think that's about it. So I'm going to put this stuff in the ultrasonic and just clean it up and put it back together. <laughs> Okay, I do not have a gasket for this that'll fit properly, uh, but I do have this gasket material. So I'm gonna cut a gasket that'll fit this. And to do that, uh, I start with a piece of paper and a crayon and just get kind of the imprint of what it is I'm trying to make with the gasket material. Okay, so this is the end result. Uh, not perfect, but good enough. You know, it'll let the bolts go through, won't obstruct the airflow, and it will make a good seal. Alright, there's one, two, three. Alright, four turns out. Okay, good. Uh, so now I'm gonna replace this overflow line and also replace the fuel line running from the gas tank. All right, this is gonna be hard to show you, uh, but what I'm gonna do is just remove this fuel line here, uh, put a new one on of the appropriate size and get rid of 
uh, this funny business that's going on here with the two pieces that are spliced. And this one is too small for the carburetor anyway. So I'll replace it all with a, I believe this is quarter inch. And then I'll turn you back on. All right, so I got the new fuel line on. And I uh, left a little bit extra. So I'm gonna bolt this back on uh, with the new gasket and then attach and cut the line to size. Okay, and there's no fuel filter on here, so I am gonna use just a basic um, Briggs & Stratton filter. Uh, it's not, it doesn't filter fine particles, but if there's anything chunky in there, it will keep it uh, from going into the carburetor. So I'll probably just throw that on uh, right there. Okay, good. Um, so I have not got the new flywheel yet. Uh, but I did get the recoil rope, so I do want to put that on and do a compression test. You know, for a two-stroke engine, there's no compression release on this. So I'm expecting to get something over 100. Um, 100 actually would be not so good. Uh, you know, 130, 140 would be uh, a healthy engine. So let's uh, see what we get. Okay, and this is just a standard size rope for a, like a chainsaw. So I think it'll fit. Um, looks to be a little bit bigger or a little bit thicker. So hopefully it'll uh, fit on okay. Let's do this one-handed. Okay, I'm gonna do a compression test. As far as I know, there's no compression release on an engine this size, so, you know, if it comes in anything below 100, then this engine's probably dead. Uh, the previous owner was running it without a, you know, a filter on the intake, so the engine could be damaged. Hopefully not. I do feel compression, uh, but it does not feel very strong. Let's see how strong it is. Yeah, that's not good. Uh, let me try holding the throttle open and doing it again. That's really bad. Um, unless there's a compression release, I would say this engine is dead and uh, is not going to start. And on a two cycle um, of this size, I, I don't think there'd be any kind of a compression release on it. 
you know what? There could be hope for this. I am not a two-cycle engine guy. I'll be the first to admit that. Um, I hooked this up to my Echo Leaf Blower, which I know is good. It's new. And it did the same test. And I get even less compression. So, I think there's hope. Uh, just to show you, I'm going to run the test again. That's it, 20. So the dirt bike has 40. So it's twice as good, right? So it should run, should run. So I'm gonna keep going on this. Uh, maybe I was uh, ready to give up too soon. All right, so we got this rigged up. It's a flywheel or just a puller, I guess, flywheel puller. And we're gonna try to remove this broken flywheel. Uh, my son is gonna actually it, do it. It doesn't fit. <laughs> Alright, stop, stop. I can't hold it anymore. What's wrong with this? Okay, so we had to put some rope down the cylinder. I cannot hold this anymore. Mm -hmm. We're going to tighten it a little bit more. Before... You said that last time. Hmm? Keep going. Supposed to happen. That? Yeah. But you pulled it off. There is a leaf in here. When you when it's lined up, you shouldn't have to push hard. It should slide in. Like that. Okay. So now we need the washer and the lock nut. Washer. Yeah. Alright, so we're just gonna snug it up and we're not gonna torque it down yet. We're just gonna make it snug but not super tight. Okay, I, have, I don't know the torque settings on this. Um, I'm going to start with 100 inch-pounds just for testing, and then I will uh, do a little research if the engine works and tighten it properly. My turn? Uh, yeah, go slowly. Okay. How do you know it's, when is that 100 torque pounds? Inch-pounds. Inch It'll click. The wrench will click. Keep going. It didn't click. That's it. That <laughs> means you're at 100. I did do two. Okay, so we got the recoil back on. Spark plug is in. Uh, got a little bit of gas in there, so I'm just going to try starting it. The kill switch is not hooked up, so if it does start, I'll have to uh, touch the ground wires to the engine and get the thing to shut off. Anyway, let me give it a try. Battery's almost dead, so hopefully this thing will start before this camera shuts down. Yeah, uh, start. Okay, engine start. Yep. Okay, quick update on this. I was really disappointed that it would not start, but as we saw from the compression numbers, the engine is probably shot. I did test for spark. Uh, we got spark. I did give it a squirt of starting fluid, which I know you shouldn't do on two cycle, but I wanted to see if it would cough or do anything, and it did nothing. So I've kind of ruled out fuel. I've ruled out spark. I know there's some other things like the reed valve or case seals, um, but I did pull the exhaust off and uh, I do see some scoring. So I think most likely we're losing compression due to, you know, a worn out piston and cylinder. Uh, so I'm going to take this engine off, uh, pull the cylinder off and just see. Um, I know you can get big bore kits for this, but that's like 50, 60 bucks. And honestly, I'm not looking for a big bore kit on this. I'm just looking for something that runs. And I can get a whole new engine with carburetor, air cleaner, transmission for 90 bucks. So it seems kind of silly to rebuild this. So I think I'll um, keep it for parts. But anyway, let me get the engine off, open it up, and just see how bad the carnage is inside.
Interesting, this one was loose. Too bad. I mean, there is some scoring, but I was expecting worse. You can see on the sides of the reed valve, or maybe you can't. There is light coming through on one side. So it's almost like the reeds are misaligned. So that actually could have been the whole issue. Um, let me loosen these screws and see if I can move that those reeds over at all. Wow, these screws are loose. I don't know if you can see this one especially. So that's probably what allowed the reeds to shift and the whole reason why the bike won't run. So there is hope for this engine, even though it is a bit worn out. I think this is the issue here. Okay, so I was really expecting to see a lot worse. I mean, the piston doesn't look great, but I think there is still some life left in it. Uh, maybe not too much, but, uh, you know, I think I can get those compression numbers up. So I'm kind of, you know, going to clean this up and put it back together. Um, I've already recentered the reed valve and tightened those screws. And the other issue here was that the cylinder, one of the bolts was loose. You know, so I think between the reed valve, the loose bolt, and of course the worn piston, um, it didn't stand much of a chance. So I'm going to fix two of those issues. Uh, I'm going to leave this piston alone, uh, just put it back together, and see if the numbers come up any.
Okay, good. So I'm going to put this back on the scooter. Uh, I'm not going to bother hooking up the chain. Really just want to see if it shows any signs of life. Uh, regardless, I ordered and have received a new engine. So uh, worst case, this is parts machine. Best case, it's a working uh, worn out engine. But either way, um, doesn't matter. Okay, so as you can see, uh, still no signs of life. So uh, that's fine. You know, like I said, I have a bunch of new parts in the garage. So I'm going to strip this thing down and build it from the ground up. That'll be in a coming video. Anyway, thanks for watching.